Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartitsa Lab, and in this particular video, we're going to be looking at a Defendu slash World War II combatant Chinjab. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a little bit more spice in it. We're going to be doing Chinjabs for wimps. Now, to deliver a classical fair burn Chinjab, typically there is a level drop, there is a degree of attachment on the opponent, and the hand smashes under the chin, rocking the head back, causing them to be knocked out or at least knocked down. So there is a drop, some degree of attachment, more often than not, and you slam this straight up. The fingers are ancillary, and if they get in the eyes, brilliant, and if they don't, that's fine. From here. From there. Okay. However, for some people, landing and delivering a chin jab with force can be quite difficult. It requires confidence and moxie to get this close to a person, and it does require some degree of strength to launch this up with force. And for some people, this can be a bit of a challenge. So there are other types of chin jab which you can play with. One of the first ones to notice is the double chin jab. Now, the double chin jab can be against opponent A and opponent B, which is absolutely fine. In this instance, I'm gonna focus on the double chin jab against one individual. In essence, we start in the same way. We may begin very close up, or we may elect to be very close up. This is where being able to drop step is very important. If I'm going, showing you papers here, I might need to take a deep lunging step to achieve the chin jab, or indeed, if I've got a little bit more of your trust, we might already be this close. In either instance, it's like this. We line the thumbs like so. So we make a little butterfly. We line the thumbs. Some people cross the thumbs. I don't like that. I think it makes withdrawal a little bit trickier. Just aligning the thumbs. So we're going to end up here, and we're going to keep the elbows nice and tight, and drive both hands straight up. Boom, like so. <coughs> Some people find this two-handed motion much, much easier to do than this single-handed crash under the jaw. So for the double chin jab, essentially, we read the book, we feed them the book. And again, these can come from a number of different angles. So they can come from down low, straight up. They can come from relatively far out, and straight into the opponent. So they can come almost like a double-handed frontal claw, or they can come as a double-handed chin jab, but either way, the best way I describe it is open the book, feed them the book, keeping the thumb somewhat aligned, hitting them with the hard base bit of the palm. People tend to find this a bit more intuitive because pushing with both hands is much more intuitive to many people. If you're slightly weaker and the door is slightly heavier, you don't push it with one hand, you push it with two. But I use the word push with caution. It should never just be a push. It is still a strike. We are still driving mass, using our elbows behind it. It's still percussive <coughs> from here. <coughs> now, I prefer to keep pressure on after my chin jabs. Some people, they'll treat it very percussive, <coughs> which is fine. But I like, once I've, once I've got that ground, once I've got that territory, really drive forward. Drive forward into other striking, attached striking, grappling or weapon drawing situations. But either way, double chin jab, nice and simple. Talking, talking, talking. Open the book, feed them the book. Aligning the thumbs, both palms are now striking into either side of the jaw. You get good. You know, in this instance, when you're doing it here, you get good use of the thumbs on the eyes. With the traditional chin jab, the fingers get to the eyes. With the double chin jab on one person, the thumbs tend to get on the eyes. Either way, biomechanically, you're still pretty much the same technique, but for a slightly weaker person, it can deliver a bit more punch and it gives them a bit more confidence than the traditional attached or unattached version. So again, double chin jab on one person, whether you're up close or whether you capitulate at a distance, close the thumbs together, drive 
forward or drive upwards. Either way, you're going to get the same result. So double chin jab is a nice simple one, it's very intuitive for people. Second chin jab for wimps is the assisted chin jab. The assisted chin jab is essentially where we create this figure four. Here, we create the figure four. And you see this a lot in Chinese, Indonesian, Filipino arts too, this level of assist. So the assisted chin jab has the hand here supporting the jabbing hand. Like so. Using two hands at the same time, this can feel actually a lot more intuitive to people and a lot less threatening than being able to drive in close and smash. So while this is my preferred chin jab, I'm a big, heavy, confident man that can strike. For a lot of people, especially newer people, and Defender is designed for newer people, having this degree of attachment as we do it, gives them a bit more confidence because they're driving both hands at the target. Also, from a defense perspective, when you do this reinforced chin jab, you've actually got a pretty decent structure here to keep you safe from grappling or striking. So if you imagine if I've got this, I've essentially, if I remove this component of the chin jab, you've got a decent framing device so that when people want to close on you, you've got a bit more resistance to defend it, or indeed, you've got the ability to strike with this hand. Forearm to the throat, chop to the throat, forearm to the throat, elbow to the face, chop to the face. You've got all of those options available to you. So from the attachment here, chin jab away, elbow, edge of hand blow. This is also quite good for a disengagement chin jab. If we're close and I don't want to remain close and I can potentially escape, chin jabbing this way gives me the surety of that frame which makes it harder for him to grapple. <coughs> also means if I want to exit out that way my parting gift can be this chop <coughs> as I exit scene. So the supported chin jab is actually a very good one for people that don't want to stick around and finish. The double chin jab, for me, I see more as an all-in aggression technique. Open the book, feed in the book. <coughs> and you could finish and do them in. The supported one, hum, allows people to exit scene fast <coughs> or fight off potentially a grapple or close. Okay. Do, 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 what else is on my list? Uh, right, the leverage chin jab. So, the leverage chin jab is essentially providing some degree of pull and some degree of push. Now, a classical chin jab, we drop down, we typically grab a bit of kidney, grab a bit of webbing, grab a bit of back, and smash here. However, one that works quite well is to pull on a shoulder, whether it's the same shoulder, or the opposite shoulder as we drive the chin jab in. Some people find this a little bit more intuitive, they find it easier to control and it provides some degree of kazushi unbalancing against the opponent. So if you imagine if you're playing friends, if you're playing the calm man, if you're playing the genial relatable man, shoulder contact is relatively normal, it's relatively normal behavioural construct. Going from the shoulder, pulling on the shoulder and driving the chin jab means that we move him so I get him side on. I still get all the effect of the chin jab against a longer surface. If you imagine I've gone from one inch of the jaw into five inches of jaw because I've turned him. So because I've turned the man, I've got a lot more jaw to work with. I've got a lot more surface area with which I can decline my technique. So the leverage chin jab essentially is grabbing a bit of collar, a bit of sleeve, a bit of jacket, a bit of epaulette, whatever you've got on the opponent, pulling 
a motion known in Asian arts as the hikite, the pulling hand, elbow in tight, the hikite, we pull him in, and we strike him out at the same time. You see, and we turn the man. We turn the man much more easier. We still deliver solid power up into his chin. Hopefully we want that brain shaking him to be unconscious. But in either instance, because we've gone for a leverage chin jab, we've pulled and we've pushed. We've now got the ability to do other stuff. Whether we want to choke him out, whether we want to face bar him and drag him somewhere else whether you want to cover his mouth and do him in that way, whatever you want to do, the leverage, the hikite, the pulling hand, and the striking hand, in this instance using the chin jab, is actually a very nice combination, okay? Then we've got the chin jab from behind. Again, <coughs> we get so obsessed with the notion of this, the notion of this. In reality, best way to attack an opponent is from a place of your strength and his weakness. So get used to being able to do the chin jab from other places than the chin. If I can get him from the side, if I can sneak up at him from the side, or even if I can manipulate the conversation from here to here, being able to do it from the side is safer for me and more dangerous for him. So whilst you don't get that amazing rock that you do with the chin, what you do make up for is the fact that I'm completely out of his kill box. All of his weapons, his two hands, any weapons he could pull off his belt, I'm now out of the way of that. So I apply the same technique in this instance, coming in here, but from the side smashing it in from the side, taking him straight over. Some of the best ways to do this are actually focusing on more the top portions of the head. So you get that immediate brain shake from the side. If you think of this as the lever, the higher I push on his head, the more it's likely to turn, the more pressure I can exert. So if I smash that palm heel from the side, if I smash that sideways chin jab, at the top of his dome, I get the brain shake, which puts him out of the game very, very quickly. So again, from the side, I can sneak up, get my attachment as I chin jab, and take him straight out of the game. So it's a pointer to say, attacking someone head on is often a last resort. I don't really ever want to be attacking someone whilst I'm in their kill box. And if I do, I do it with overwhelming force. But if the opportunity is available to me, doing it from the side boom, is a lot better. So again, a chin jab for wimps may be getting good at conversational deployment. Talky, 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 offset yourself boom, and take it. Or sneaking up on people from the side, essentially sucker punching them with the chin jab. Or indeed, from behind. Now with behind, the important thing really is that attachment from here. The great thing from behind is if he's got a wall near him, if he's got stairway, door frame, whatever, being able to smash his head in is really quite useful. So again, your chin jab can be used from behind, from the side, or up front, okay? Also, don't forget, another great chin jab for wimps is being able to chin jab from a seated position. So if you think of yourself getting out of a chair, straight up at a person, it actually gives you a lot of forward momentum, a lot of forward energy that people sometimes struggle to attain standing up. So if my opponent is standing up and I'm sitting down, as long as I can push off my back foot on this chair. If I can push off with my back foot on this chair and deliver the chin jab at the same time, all of my body weight barrels into that man. <laughs> from here, straight up. So from a seated position, also get practiced in pushing off and push off with all of my weight going forward. There's no point in me 
just standing up, I might as well turn the act of standing up into the attack too. <laughs> from here. So push off from the chair. All of my body weight and mass is going forward anyway. And in this instance, the drill bit I'm adding to it is the chin jab. <laughs> from here. So those are a couple of ways to experiment with other types of chin jab. So the double chin jab, the assisted chin jab, the leverage or the pull push chin jab, the chin jab from the side or behind, and the seated mass driven version. Each of those should hopefully give you a little bit of extra sauce to throw on what is already a very good technique. It's really good for beginners that are a bit more nervous or where there is a height, weight, strength disparity. For beginners, some of these work really well. Hope you found that interesting. Cheers.